The iPad Pro is now supercharged by the Apple M1 chip. Today we're going to discuss everything you need to know when it comes to gaming on this machine. The M1 chip was previously brought to the 13-inch MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, Mac Mini, and obviously the upcoming iMac 24-inch. It has the same 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU. The new iPad Pro 12-inch and 11-inch have the same resolution and aspect ratio as the 3rd and 4th gen iPad Pros. So it's safe to say, games which were optimized for previous models, displays, will work exactly the same here. Just like the iPad Pro 3rd and 4th gen, this new iPad Pro also has a ProMotion display. This is a new technology that delivers refresh rates up to 120Hz. Any games that supported this tech will work much the same. Now, what's really important, just because the iPad Pro has the M1 chip, it doesn't mean all the games which are playable on M1-based Macs will be supported here too. Apple have a very close-minded approach when it comes to downloading apps on iOS or iPadOS. Everything must come from the App Store. Compared to the iPad Pro with the A12Z Bionic, this new iPad Pro has up to 50% faster CPU performance and up to 40% faster GPU performance. Safe to say, pretty much every App Store game will run on here like a charm. To be honest though, most games worked fine on the last two iPad Pros as they are very powerful. That said, to play games on those machines at 120 FPS, you would often have to play at a lower graphics quality. I imagine the M1 iPad Pro will use considerably less resources to achieve this higher frame rate. Apple M1 will also allow more big AAA games to come to iPad Pro. Definity Original Sin 2 is finally coming. It provides the whole experience without compromise, 60 FPS and local co-op. However, despite iPad Pro now being powered by Apple M1 and having more system memory, it's still being held back by the absence of swappable memory. I asked Elvarels about this, the people behind bringing Definity Original Sin 2 to iPad, and they replied saying, on Mac, you have a term called swappable memory, which resides on the hard drive whenever you have a low memory situation. This doesn't apply to an iPad which doesn't have any such memory. This means that an application is limited by a fixed amount of memory. So, on an iPad Pro with 8GB of memory, a developer might expect that only 4 or 5GB of memory will be available. A developer can run out of memory very quickly here if they allocate too much. And if you allocate more than you need, the system will outright kill you. And that's a bit dramatic, but you get what I mean, you know, it's, it's not going to work well. This could be a major issue on why we don't see more AAA games come to this platform, why many games don't offer custom graphics in order to avoid a user going beyond the recommended settings for performance, or why developers have to scale down their game's graphics quality compared to their PC counterpart. If you didn't know, a few gaming accessories are supported on iPad. In iPadOS 13 and above, you can use a PS4 or Xbox One controller, and soon in iPadOS 14.5, next-gen controllers will be supported too. Haptic vibration is also supported, but almost no apps currently use this feature. I've only come across one being the racing game Rush Rally 3, and holy moly, it is awesome. Mouse and keyboard support is also supported on iPads. 
There are a few games with keyboard support, however, I can only spot two games with mouse support right now, being Pascal's Wager and Company of Heroes. When more games get this support, iPad will be blurring the lines between a portable tablet and a full-on PC. Which iPad Pro should you buy? There are two models of the iPad Pro on offer, the 11-inch with a liquid retina display and the 12.9-inch with a liquid retina XDR display. Both offer 100% identical performance with the Apple M1 chip, so you must decide. Do you want a larger or smaller display? Storage options are important too. 128GB, 256GB or 512GB of storage will give you 8GB of RAM and 1TB or 2TB storage options will give you 16GB of RAM. If you can afford it, go for the 1TB or 2TB option as it will give you better performance in games that require more memory. That said, there are not really many games on iPad that require anything over 8GB of memory yet due to the, well, virtual memory issue. But choosing this option will future-proof the iPad for years to come. For a cheaper option, definitely get at least 256GB of storage. Mobile games are getting more advanced these days and requiring more storage. For example, Genjin Impact requires 10 gigabytes, XCOM 2 requires 8.5 gigabytes, and NBA 2K21 requires 4.5. Are you going to buy the new iPad Pro? If so, will you get one with 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM? Do you think more AAA games will come to iPad Pro now, with M1 being on board? Let me know what you think of this machine in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe and turn on notifications as I'm definitely going to be testing many games on this iPad Pro when it comes out. Anyway, my name's Stewie and thanks for watching.